okay. Whew, I feel kind of camera shy. Little little stage fright here. Um <laughs> I I just jumped up like um almost 30 subscribers. It's a big shock. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't really particularly think that I have that much going on, you know. I, um, I, I just, I think a lot. I like to think. You know what I like to do? I like to, I like to think about things that I never thought about for a large chunk of my adult life. I like to um, ask what if and totally, what's the word? Totally. Um, immerse myself in the what ifs just just because I used to be so afraid to ask what if it was like this big taboo you don't want to ask questions you don't want to think too much you want to just trust that it's all true and believe what you're told and believe what you read and the Bible is God's word and everything and Jesus is God's son and Jesus came down he save us all and we're all corrupt sinners and all this stuff and anytime I had questions, it's like, you don't want to ask, you don't want to ask those questions, because that's Satan talking to you, and he's confusing you, and he's making you trip in your walk with God, and all these things, all these fears. I remember sometimes I would literally be afraid of my own thoughts, afraid of, of accidentally thinking the wrong thing, and then, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? You know, is God going to strike me down? I was afraid. I was afraid to use my own brain and think beyond what I was supposed to think. You know, it's like, okay, these are the acceptable um, answers to the questions that I had, and I couldn't stray beyond those acceptable answers. Honestly, I was afraid, and and now I feel like I can't stop. I can't get enough thinking. I cannot get enough, and I'm not. I am not. There's so many wonderful people on YouTube who actually know stuff, and I love to watch the videos. I love to watch the videos, and and listen to the people who who really have done their research. And you know, I've I've read things by people who have done all the hard work you know I'm not one of those people that's gonna go out there and do the hard work myself <laughs> um, I, I I hardly had any college whatsoever I'm just average person who um, one day just decided that I didn't want to deal with delusions in my life anymore I had this delusion that this guy that I was caring for who was ill actually cared for me and actually wanted to be my friend and I actually thought I was helping a friend and putting my time and energy and effort and financial situation whatever into helping this guy. I also believed that the last six years of my marriage, well I believed my whole marriage was actually about love, that my husband loved me. Long story short, my whole life has been a bunch of delusions that I didn't know were delusions, that I just assumed or took them at face value and and believed in them. I believed in them. Like the bartender, there's another one. I believed that he was my friend. I believed that he cared. Everything that he said, I believed. Hook, line, and sinker. And that turned out to be one of the things that was like a wrecking ball going through my life. Um, even more than the guy who lived with me, that really hurt my life and hurt me. And it, even to this day, the guy still tr is trying to hurt me. So I have done a serious reviewing of my life, and I realize that delusion is not good for me. All delusion does is hurt me. And so um, that's my thing. I want to think. I want to confront my questions. I want to face... Uh, down the things that have always seemed illogical to me. Figure out what exactly is illogical about them. Find the things in each thing that's always nagged at me. Is there something wrong with this story or whatever? And find out what it is. Find out the the things that don't make sense. Broadcast them. Call attention to them. On that, um, I had occasion today to read or not read watch a video this is an old video it was put up eight months ago by midweek politics 
date it's called Pastor John Hagee. Atheists should leave the country. No one will miss them. Isn't that sad? I have to say I feel sorry for believers like this man and others that they they can't stand to see their own failures. They can't stand to be um they don't like they don't like to see to have their failures rubbed in their face which is exactly what people who don't believe what they what they're serving up <laughs> are we represent their failures they don't like the fact that their failures are walking around reminding them all the time of how they have failed uh let's see they they're supposed to go out into the world and convert all of us to their beliefs and this is what they they're supposed to do for their God for Jesus and those of us who are not convinced by their arguments by their puny hum, human attempts to convince us that um, their book is significant in some way the Bible has some significance to it uh, more than other books you know and that's the thing that's my first stumbling block is um okay the Bible says it what so what? Why is that of any significance at all? What makes what makes the Bible and what the Bible has to say any different than I don't have a book handy. It would have been so dramatic to hold up something um, than any other book has to say. Um, <laughs> why is what what is the Bible as far as what makes it any different than than the Quran or or you know, there, there's so many holy books. What makes the Bible any any more special than those books? And why are those books special? Why are they more special than any book that you find in the fiction section of the bookstore? Uh, so that's my first stumbling block. Okay, you 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 spout out spout spout out verses from this book, and that's supposed to impress me. That's supposed to convince me that these people um, that it's describing were actually real and they actually lived and this kind of stuff actually happened I don't believe it okay so so they the sad thing is it's their own God who's letting them down their own God who refuses to manifest himself who, who refuses to show in any way shape or form that he exists as I said in my previous videos, this God is all-knowing, supposedly. He knows every single one of us, supposedly, and he knows what it would take for every single one of us to be convinced enough to believe. And that is being withheld from us. I can only conclude that that means that he doesn't really want us to be saved. But the sad thing is these people, like this pastor, don't know that. And so they're trying their utmost to save us those of us who were created to not be saved and they view it as a huge failure and instead of you know they don't like seeing their failure but instead of acknowledging the fact that it's a failure on their part they want to rail against us and blame us for the fact that we weren't we didn't buy into their their little whatever gymnastics that they had to go through to try to get us to believe we didn't buy into it so we're bad people it's not that they're failures we're just bad people that's what it is and that's what they tell themselves and they get all mad oh those horrible evil atheists you know um rather than say well maybe those horrible evil, evil atheists didn't didn't buy into it because it's not god's will for them to believe maybe it's god's will that that some of us are supposed to burn in hell and be tortured forever you know thinking thinking about this how this God is all-knowing and knows everything knows our entire whatever before we're even born he's got the plan all laid out it's part of his plan for some of us to go to hell who are these people to think that they can question God's plan and yet they try they try to save us even though it's God's plan for us to go to hell and when they fail because we're not savable then we're bad people and we're the ones that they attack they don't attack their God for making people like us and they don't accept the fact that they're failures that they have failed they want to put it all on atheists atheists are bad people atheists should leave the country which by the way was founded by um, 
people who, regardless of whatever beliefs they had, did not want this nation to um, adhere to any one belief. This was not to be a religion, a Christian nation. That's They specifically set out to make sure this would not ever become a Christian nation. So this guy's this guy and his servant saying that this was this country was brought up by good Christian people. <laughs> That's bullshit. Yes, there were Christian people that helped build this country. There were also Christian people that were out slaughtering the natives that were here first and trying to shove Christianity down the natives' throats and take away their language and their culture and their religion that they already had. So, yeah, good old Christians doing all that wonderful good old Christian stuff and destroying entire cultures, you know, in the name of God. Anyway, so that's what I thought. That's what I think about John Hagee and his idea that America was founded by Christians and <laughs> that Christians, sh uh, that atheists should have to leave. I don't think we should have to be blamed for the fact that we're atheists. Um, you can't force belief. You cannot make yourself believe something. Either you believe it or you don't. And if we don't believe it, it's because of one of two possible reasons. One, you fail to convince. You don't, you don't, you don't persuade. Or number two, your God, it's part of his plan that we don't believe. And it's part of his plan that we go to hell. And who are you again to question God? So anyway, that's it. That's my, that's my first video attempt now that I have more people. <laughs> again, thank you for any one of you who, um, who, came along and actually subscribed to me. It's a very huge compliment to me and very flattering to me. And um, thanks. <laughs> Bye.